Jeezy Berserker. Comical, how are we feeling? Oh, that's good. I'm Jack, one of three you're about to meet, so let's waste no time and get them on stage. Firstly, from the YouTube channel Nerd Den, Jack. Hi, what's up? How are we all doing? Woo! 14's new look, everybody, get used to it. Very Coming and roll. soon in the giggle. Oh, yes. And secondly and lastly, from an awful lot of running podcast, also Jack. Hey. Woo. We clearly don't know what the word diversity means. <laughs> now, we have three exciting things to be cracking on with. The first is Nerd Den's 60th anniversary speakings about something we're all no doubt yeah. reasonably excited for. Are we excited? Hey, that's what I love to hear. Good, good. Well, over to you. Well, guys, guess what's happening next month? Mm -hmm. There's something called uh, the Star Beast. Huh? The Star, the Star Beast. Yeah, it's this adaptation of an obscure Marvel comic. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, it's part of the MCU. Apparently so. <laughs> oh, I sick. Mean, it's owned by Disney now, so. Fair. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, we've got less than a month to rock and roll. So I want to throw it over to you two. What are your final predictions for the 60th anniversary specials? Because since we were last on stage, oh. we've had a bit of news, so. Mm. Naughty Doctor. You reckon? Uh, which, think, which ones? Which I doctors? Think, mm, I think Smith. Shout out for Smith. Should Smith be in it? Yes! Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. I think maybe some Capaldi as well oh. might sneak in there. Oh, yeah, Big yeah, shout yeah. out I for Capaldi. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe the Pons. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, slightly yeah. less of a cheer for the Pons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they outstay their welcome. Way! <laughs> my, but I, I'm gonna be honest. My big hope is Jody. Definitely Jody. I really would love that if Jody was there. If in any sense passing the torch to Shooty, because I feel like she missed out on that personally. That's fair. That's fair. I don't know if I have any predictions because I'm terrible at them. Okay. But I'm pretty confident that what is it? David Tennant. Yeah. yeah. He's in it for yeah. a bit. Yeah, for a bit. I mean, yeah. he's not confident. in much, is he? He should be in more stuff, really. He's he not should. in an awful lot. He's of... so underrepresented, including this stage. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do feel like I'm sat in the middle of the Spider-Man pointing meme right now. Well. Hey. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, we've got two of the episodes airing in December. So I've got to ask, are you disappointed in any way that we're not getting all of them in November? No, not a chance. I, I understand why they've done it. It makes a yeah. lot of sense. I mean, I'm glad they're not just shooting it out in one day or like one week. Because I bet it was uh, on the t cards to do it just the week of the anniversary, yeah. which would have been too much too yeah. fast. Twitter would have exploded by then. If I wasn't already. Yeah, fair. Yeah. It always does. <laughs> also, just quickly, you, you're really sticking with that look, aren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I've right, been told it suits me, apparently. Yeah. Bye. My Someone mom. that doesn't like you? <laughs> well, it's my mum that said it, so... <laughs> no comment. Jack, Oy. over to you. Uh, well, I was initially a little bit upset, but then I thought about it more, and then you think about it, it means that we have at least only a two-week wait between the 60th specials and Shooty's first episode. Yeah. And, I mean, that just sounds fantastic to me, rather than being like, oh, at the end of things, I'm waiting almost a month. We've just got that small little gap now. So, yeah, I think... I've made a piece of it, and I'm very excited, yes. Actually, do we know the name of the Christmas special yet? Uh, it is out there, but just... Oh, I see. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. I guarantee... If it's anything, like, similar to Christmas Invasion, because RTD would want to do that, like yeah. the Christmas attack or something stupid like that. <laughs> yeah, attack of Christmas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get killed by the Christmas tree! <laughs> Yeah, speaking of Jackie Christmas, Tyler, though, back, please. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. But speaking of Christmas, though, it's the first Christmas special we've had since what, 2017. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Jody yeah. didn't get a Christmas special. So no, yeah. how Robbed. do you feel that Christmas is going to be celebrated good this time? We're going to be vibing Christmas Day, 6, 7 p.m. We're going to sit down, cheeky uh, glass of something, 
and we're going to be vibing to Shooty's yes. full-on debut episode. Yes. Oh, I can see oh. myself on this screen. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Who's excited for Shooty? Yes. Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited that it's not a New Year's thing because my birthday is on New Year's Eve. That's oh, my it? time. <laughs> Jody can go away. It's my day. But Christmas, I don't care. <laughs> I, I love that you are just like shading half the fan base because yes. because it personally inconveniences you. Yes, yeah, I'm a Doctor Who fan. Bad, I'm allowed to be entitled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. that's our whole thing. Yeah, some true. more than others. Yeah, uh, I mean, Christmas has always been when I vibe the most with Doctor Who. So yeah. I was I was always personally someone that was like, yeah, I like the New Year's Day ones, but I feel like Jodie deserved of any doctor a Christmas special, particularly if it was just one by herself, just saving Christmas for like one family. 13th I mean, Doctor amazing. Saves Christmas. Yeah. Coming soon to Big oh, Finish. Oh, mate. Yo, oh, that would be epic. Would love that, yeah. That would be epic. But obviously moving on from Christmas, we've got uh, Series 14. That's coming around. Eight brand new spanking episodes, which... Oh, yeah, they're going to be releasing in spring. How does it feel? Wait, no. actually, spring? Yeah. I'm learning a lot up here. This <laughs> is great. Yeah, yeah. We are so back. I it mean, they're already like, starting on you know, series 15. <laughs> yeah. That well, is I mean, mental. You yeah. think of when we had RTD1, it was Christmas special. Around Easter, we had the series, and then we had a little tease of the Christmas special at the end of that, and then we had Christmas, and then, you know, rinse, repeat. And it feels like, I, I suppose we've not really had that since series five, even, actually, because yeah. series six had a strange sort of look at it. Well, actually, I suppose like you could maybe say. I no, mean, no, Doctor no, no, Who no, hasn't been good since 1968, at least. No. I, 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 to be honest, has it ever been good? Oh, not a chance, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited for that, yeah. you know. Well, because that's the thing with Series 14, you know, it's going to be a complete new era. There's going to be new monsters. We saw that, was it a slug monster or something filming? Oh, I'm so excited for that slug. Yeah. I don't know what its deal is, that weird little slug man, but he's already my best friend and I love him. Oh, mate. I I've will protect him back up. I've claimed him. Yes. Wow. But just to round off, you know, all this talk about news and stuff like that, over the next year, we're going to be seeing two new doctors, new companion, Returning companions as well, you know. Shout yes. out to Bonnie Langford. Woo! Yeah. Let's hear so from Bonnie. Bonnie. Yeah. Oh, Bush. <laughs> oh, okay. But <laughs> just to uh, recap, you know, over the next year we've got a lot of new things. What excites you the most? Like, if you had to pick something. Well, over the next if year. I could pick on my wife's behalf, who's here, it's got to be Mel, right? Favorite seventh <laughs> Doctor companion, Mel Bush. <laughs> Famous catchphrase, ah. No, uh, she's it, saying it was no, great I've that got it one wrong. time where it matched the ending sting of the episode. It was tremendous. <laughs> but I, I honestly don't know. I mean, if there's anything that is to be looked forward to, it's Shooty. Yeah. He's yeah. going to bring so much new energy to the role that I cannot wait for. And oh, I love yeah. all of his variants as well. Character options is going to be rich. <laughs> That or they're going to be sweating right now. Think of that. We to make like 15 different figures. How do I paint pinstripes? <laughs> yeah, no, bring back the pop figures, man, honestly. Yeah, bring them back. Funko's going to be minted. Oh, they're already minted. Who am I kidding? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just need to bring out a beat the meat Funko pop. Yeah, beat the meat first, please. man. Bring yeah. that. Oh, yo. actually, yeah, I changed my answer. Beat the meat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know Big what? old Miriam. Yeah, just yeah. bring back beat the meat for series 14 and 15 at this point. The new Frobisher. Yes, the new Frobisher. Well, bring, bring in Frobisher. Let's just bring, bring in Frobisher. Frobisher. Yes. You know? Talking penguin. Exactly. Best yeah. companion the, the show has ever had. Damn exactly. Straight. But, you know, there's a Frobisher hey, in the yo, audience. Oh, there it. he is. Hey. Hey, hey, Doc. Frobisher. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Best character, yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> but, you know, with the 60th and stuff like that, we've got a bunch of other things coming out alongside. You know, we've got with BBC iPlayer, in a few days, 1st of November, yeah. we're getting a big back catalogue being released. You know, we've yes. got yes. nearly all of the classic episodes. I can't wait yeah. to watch An Unearthly Child. Yeah, Ooh. I wonder why that's not on there. Yeah, no, I mean, that's incredible. That must have taken so much negotiation behind the scenes. I can imagine RTD just getting people by the neck. Yeah. And like, look, it's either City of Death yeah. or Get Out of My Office. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in a Welsh accent, I can't do Welsh. But just imagine that. You know Welsh No, I can't do it. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. Uh... But to be fair, RTD is like your height. So yeah. just walks into the room and like, OK, you can have any episodes you want. Mm. Except for an earthly child. Yeah. yeah. Gate kept. <laughs>
Well, also alongside that, we've got the Missing Episodes podcast as well. So you get to listen to Mark, Marco Polo as a podcast. I yeah, mean, as if I didn't need any more top two podcasts, you know, um, <laughs> competition. Yeah, yeah. And we've got, what else have we got? Oh, we've got a few documentaries as well. Yeah, Ooh, we've got. have we? Yeah. Some I'm learning everything. This is great. You yeah. guys take five. You're yeah. right. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, we've got some stuff uh, on oh, BBC Oh, it looks Four. like a therapist couch now. Yeah, Doctor Who therapy. I mean, so how does that make therapy, you feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just well, it all started in series two, <laughs> when Rose was Rose. <laughs> Yo, get over it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm better, Martha. Yep. Just don't string her along. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so there's some stuff on BBC Four. David Tennant again doing a, a retrospective. Look he doesn't do enough. He doesn't. He do doesn't. Enough. Yeah, he's hella underrated. That, that poor guy. man. Yeah, that poor man. Yeah, and. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? There's some things on the tip of my tongue. Oh yeah, we got some radio documentaries as well. Yeah, some cast interviews. Jody, Christopher Eccleston. I think like Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat are doing something as well, which yeah. Mark Gatiss for next showrunner. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. That's my pick. You can oh, hear the a, you can hear no. the response. <laughs> <laughs> Very right. cold. Popular opinion. Never mind. Back to my sofa. Back to your sofa indeed. But. All of this talk of 60th anniversary specials, you know. And I've got a few guests with me today, you know. I've met incredible people in this community. Like, you know, Shah from Type 40 as well, who's here recording, thank you. And then, somewhere in the back, Luke, Meg, and Dom are all here from DW2012. Give them all a round of applause, people, because they are legendary. But, see, the thing is, I've got something all to show you, and a uh, bit of improv acting here, you know. Vote for me at the Oscars, please. Um, <coughs> got an old uh, tool. And when I point this tool at a monitor, hang on, here we go. Massive round of applause to the team at DW 2012. Absolute legends. That was incredible. And uh, the day after the Star Beast as well, that's where part one will be. Uh, wow. <laughs> so you're basically getting two Christmas dinners, that's one amazing. day after another. Was that that was is that spectacular. Chris Walker Thompson at the end there is the second Doctor. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I'm gassed. I'm well, gassed. something to look forward to, my friends. And something else to look forward to is coming up now. Our good friend here, Jack Alexander. Take it away. Hey, yes. Hey. Uh, so, yes, an awful lot of running is the podcast I do with my excellent co host, Robin, who is in the audience. Robin, Woo! stand up now. Hey! Jim Robin! Fit. The uh, tin dog to my doctor. Uh, it's a discussion based podcast. We do lots of different things, but we also have a special show called Baz and Fandom, which features Doctor Who debates between fans. And we're going to have a, a bit of a rematch here after May's uh, panel hey, between. Hey. This man and this man here, where they will be facing off to win this super special secret Doctor Who prize and be crowned number one Doctor Who fan at MCM Comic Con. Oh, and also the best Jack as and well. And the loser will be a fake fan. I, uh, I can't do it again, man. I can't be a fake <laughs> fan again. Now, the good thing is I'm going to be asking all of you to help me. This is a debate battle. Uh, they all have time to debate the questions in a second. You need to help me decide which uh, argument just, uh, is best, not which uh, bit. Which oh, yo, I'll actually hurt you, though. Uh -huh. All right, you uh -huh. two, do you want a room? Uh, oh, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to help me decide which argument is best. It's not based on the answer, based on the actual, well, description they give and argument they give, okay? okay. So... I'm going to come to you for this very first question, Mr. Nerd Den. All right, Seeing as up? you are returning winner, yeah, our man, reigning champion, as it were, my very first question. Yep. If not, beat the meep. What other expanded media element should be in the six year specials? You will have 20 seconds to put forward your answer and argue it before Jack gets his turn. Your time starts. Now, what's the name of that Dalek hunter geezer? I can't remember his name. Yeah. Abson Dak, yeah, Abson Dak, clearly iconic, you know. <laughs> and also, oh, it so gives iconic. more uh, opportunity to explore the Daleks, you know, someone that absolutely hates them, and you know, he's got a bit of a backstory. Imagine that being adapted to TV. It'd be bloody epic, you know what I mean? So, uh, Disney. Oh, and stop. Oh, okay. Okay, wow, Abson Dak. Very, very 90s pick. Lots of pouches involved there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool. Abson Dak. Awesome. And Mr. Reeves, your time starts now. 
What's the name of that penguin? Oh, yeah, it's Frobisher over there. Uh, Talking oh, crime-fighting penguin. What is better than that? First of all, he forgot the name of the first one. How iconic. But yes, <coughs> Frobisher, yeah. the talking penguin. Need I say more? No, I don't. He's so cool. Yes. All hell, Frobisher. Oh, and that's yeah. your time, yes. Yeah, I oh, suppose. Boy, Very good. Man. Okay, you will now have two minutes, boys, to battle it out between each other. This is where your argument time comes oh. forward. This is what you'll be making your pick hey, on, Mar, everyone, okay? And, boys, your time starts now. You forgot his name. Yeah, I've just got mine like sponge, so I, I mean, I would have forgot Frobisher's name. Incre but, oh, really? Yeah. Wow, so cool. But, yes, it, give me one good reason not to have Frobisher in the series. Uh, because we've just had a big fluffy animal, you know, mixing it up with some Yeah, and we love him. You're wearing geezer. that creature. I mean, yeah, 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 okay, just edit this one out. But, like, <laughs> you know, imagine a muscly Dalek hunter roaming about, you know. And imagine, right, you could already set this one up to have history with the Doctor, you know, the time war and all that cool stuff. Oh, yeah, time yeah. war. We've not had enough of that, have we? No, but <laughs> you bring it back in a new way. You know, you have that whole timey-wimey thing, something that, you know, give a bit of mystery. Because let's be honest, certain decisions in the show have removed the mystery. So why don't we give something back? And a Dalek hunter would also give some much more oomph to the Daleks as well, because let's be honest, those pepper pots have gone a bit stirred. They're so. fine on their own. The Daleks are iconic. Frobisher deserves uh, it, including nah, anything nah, from nah, Colin's nah, nah. era, because Colin deserves better, because he got screwed. Yes! Oh, okay. Yes! Oh, man. And as does Peter oh. Cushing. <laughs> Excellent cosplay there, sir. <laughs> I don't need more time. I'm sitting down. Um, okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, anything to round off, Jack? You're 40 seconds after you want to put anything else. Uh, if everyone votes for me, I'll give them a tenner. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> Points at the you bar, let's bribe. go. You can't bribe, what was right, that? I think I will call it that. It's I a technicality. Okay, right, lovely, okay. So if you think that Jack Reed's argument for Frobisher all, to all hail the big talking bird was best, cheer now! Shit. Oh. I love you all. Very respectable, Doc, very respectable. Okay, and if you think that Jack's <sighs> argument for Absom Doc was best, give a cheer now! <laughs> yo, what, man? Nah, nah, yo, I'm, I'm retiring right now. Oh, yeah. wow. I mean, okay, Jack's first point goes Jack Reeves. Oh, my days, yo. I'm being and set up in I defeat tell you here. What, can we just get one very quick MCM? Oh, hail the big talking bird. One, two, three. Oh, hail the talking bird. Woo. Super, oh. okay. Yo, Second I'm being round. rinsed here, man. Zero. Jack, you have oh. a chance to call this back. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm sure okay. you can do this. Okay, next question. I'm going to come to you first this time, Jack. Hello, darling. Okay. I know it doesn't narrow things down, but Mr. Reeves, coming to you first, okay? So, other than the big three, which returning villain should the 15th Doctor face in his first series? Well, I thought long and hard in those three seconds he just asked me that question. I'm pretty confident yeah. I'm going to go with the Weeping Angels. Oh, yeah. Because they haven't been good for a very long time. Have I timed? No, oh, you are timed, yes. Yes. Well, they just deserve better, much like my Frobisher pick before him. The Weeping Angels deserve a great comeback story. They've had some good ones in the past, but none that have really gone to the roots of the angels. And stop! I will. Lovely. Okay. Uh, same question to you, Jack. Your time so, starts now. Zygons. Because you know why? There's so much potential with those shape-shifting buggers, because... You know, who doesn't love a good old identity crisis story, you know? Not knowing who to trust. I mean, Marvel kind of did it with Secret Invasion, but Doctor Who can do it better. <laughs> so if you want to see some shape-shifting bug-eyed monsters, yeah, just shout for me, Stop! basically. Yeah. Sydney Newman stares down at you in yeah, hell. Yeah, turning in his grave, absolutely. Okay, boys, and your two minutes start. No! Zygons is a good choice. I will say that up okay. front. It is a damn good choice. However, um. I don't think... They're that interesting outside of them being shapeshifters. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I could also say that about the Weeping Angels. Let's be honest, they've only had one perfect episode, which yes, was Blink. But they're and, very unique. But you run the risk of ruining them. Like, you know, there's people that want them to be revealed to be dead Time Lords. So I feel like with the Zygons, you can take them anywhere. You could do an Earth based story, or you could have, I don't know, an episode where the Doctor ends up on Mars thinking, oh, bumping into some Ice Warriors. Turns out they're all bloody Zygons trying to, like, hijack So it's Empress of Mars, but worse, is what oh. you're saying. Well, no, not 
worse because, you know, someone like RCD could really bring that stuff to life. Like, imagine a groundbreaking drama with Zygons written by RCD. I mean, like... Yeah, but can you imagine what if Moffat came back and tried the Weeping Angels again after all this time? What, and drive him into the ground even more? Nah, yeah, why nah, not? Nah. <laughs> no, or imagine RTD giving his own take on the Angels. Mm. The groundwork's there. I don't know, we've already had up. one geezer certain uh, Chibnall try it. And whilst it was an okay episode, don't get me wrong, I, it just doesn't hit the same, you know? Neither does any Zygon story that's ever been made. Oh, Ooh. Series 9 two-parter, though. I don't he know. He went there. And 50th anniversary. Let's say yeah. Day of the Doctor, Jack. Come on. Yeah, yeah but Day they were the, the weakest part of that special. No. Okay, yeah, they were heavily underutilized. But let me tell you, the follow-up part of that story in Series 9, it was bloody sexy, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was it, though? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean the speech yeah. was good, but that's got nothing to do with the Zygons. No. Well, no, it's a stop from them fighting and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm making <laughs> random hand movements. Throwing yeah. up gang signs. What, what are you doing? Hey. What is this? Right, order. I'm going to call it there. Okay, right. I think we've uh, said enough there about things. Okay, if you think that Jack Reeves' answer of the Weeping Angels and his argument was best, cheer now. Oh, man. Very respectable, oh. very nice. If you think that Jack Nerd Dent's answer of the Zygons is the best answer, cheer now! <laughs> yeah! Is that louder? Is that louder? That was very close, I think. And it's not just that we've got another question. I'm going to give it to Jack! Nerd yes! Den. Woo! Yeah. You fools. <laughs> okay. Uh, My which does <laughs> add some stakes to our final My question, which again is big. not me cheating at all. Okay. The very final question. Obviously, Doctor Who, very long history of now 60 years. What single story should you use to get someone hooked on 60 years of Doctor Who? And I'm going to come to you very first, Jack Nerd Den. Let's hear it, Mr. Devich. All right, what's up? So I'm going to be bog standard, but I'm just going to throw a rose in there because it is the perfect introduction to 60 years of Doctor Who. Because, you know, you've got some mysterious man in a shopping mall with some shop window dummies. And Mickey Smith. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you have your That's time. CGI. But, you know, it does hold up really well. And nothing beats meeting that random bloke with a northern accent who Stop. saves the day. Hey. Solid choice. No, it's absolutely a solid choice. Thank okay. You. Now, Mr. Reeves, what is your pick? What's Love the, the perfect monsters. episode to get someone hooked on Doctor Who? Time I'm going now. for Waters of Mars. Ooh. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect for introducing the show, but why not lead with your best foot forward? Waters of Mars is one of the best Tenth Doctor stories, or really any of the stories of the modern era, in my opinion. I was tempted for Heaven Sent for the same reasons, but that is a bit sort of on its own. Waters of Mars has the perfect sort of structure, simple uh, villain, thank you, but that iconic. Is your time. And thank you. And for the very last time, Scoop, scoop. bye! All right. Mine's better. <laughs> Whoa! <yo. laughs> I forgot yo. where I was. Uh, well, I was waiting know, for the mic drop there. Mine's don't, better. Don't get me wrong. It's a solid episode. Don't get me wrong. And oh my God, it's like I will try my best not to get you wrong. Okay, but there's a lot of uh, backstory you need to know. Like, why is this doctor all like? Yeah, the laws of time of mine, and they will obey me. Like, yo, what's his, you know, agenda? Like, why is he like that? Is he what's just his gender? No, agenda. are you assuming? It? I'm sorry. <laughs> you yeah, know what you, you know are. What I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, you know, like you've got to know a bit to understand the character. Whereas with Rose, you, you, you are introduced to this mysterious bloke, and it's like, okay, he's been around for a bit. You know, the scenes in Clive's shed hint at past incarnations and stuff like that. So. You kind of uh, given the little uh, hand to hold as you explore. I completely, Doctor Who. I agree with you there. However, Waters of Mars is just an objectively better story, in my opinion. I, maybe that's an unpopular opinion to have, but I think Waters of Mars is just a better one. And why not lead with your best foot forward? True. And plus, the flood is just cool. I mean, the flood are cool. Uh, don't get yeah. me wrong. But as a uh, uh, that's the I'm correct yeah. bell. Yeah, I'm a bit confused there, but. <laughs> Britain's shops being invaded by living plastic. I mean, that's pretty cool, man. Okay, not really horrific, but come on. You could actually imagine that happening at some point. Imagine. I'm going to refer to my previous point. Mickey Smith. Hey, I mean, CGI doesn't uh, age well in certain parts. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but the collection box sets anyone? If Series 1's on that, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Don't know what happened with my voice there. I can't lie. Very high. <laughs> but no, yeah. I, uh, I respectfully disagree. 
Okay. I res respectfully disagree with yours. And I feel like that's... Uh, well, that's our time. I yeah. then just going to sort you both there if you just could tell us. I respect you disagree with you. Yeah, yeah, we're being nice to each other. Okay, so. so if you think that Mr. Nerd Den's answer of Rose is the perfect episode to hook people on and his argument was best, let's just uh, cheer now, please. Yeah. You affected me there. I started going, this is myself then. If you think that Mr. Reeves' answer of the waters of Mars, mm. fan favorite episode, and his argument is best, cheer now! Yeah. Nah, nah, okay, yeah. Uh, well, it gives I'm me done. Yeah, great, I'm done, bro. I'm done. great pleasure. Uh, I lost my title, man. To name oh. Mr. Jack Reeves oh. in his retirement oh. Oh. appearance, top Doctor Who fan of MCM Comic Con. Hey, well done, man, well done. Well done, lad. Well if done. If you'd like to open that up as well and show everyone how amazing your prize is. Oh, okay, yeah. Very fitting. Very fitting. It's Very the B&M fitting. Triple Tenant set. Of course it is. Oh. Well done, yes. dude. Well done. I mean, it is fitting, to be fair. I mean, yeah. almost, I suppose. Well, yes, yeah. I my mean, friends, I'm one dress here, I suppose. we are coming close to the end, and I have one final thing. Ooh. This is actually my last panel I'm planning on doing. This is my fifth and what will now be my final one. I have loved doing this, but I'm going to hand it over to these guys in the near future. However, these guys have gotten good prizes, but none are yeah. uh, finer than the prize I'm going to set for this quiz. Ooh. Whoever wins will have the title of the new host of the community show. Oh, oh yo! All the stakes all have arisen! The branding, all the names, everything that comes along with it, all five of the previous panels, all two seasons of the show I've managed to do. Wait, so we get the We'll go to either Jack here or Jack oh, there. Yo. Yo. I am officially retiring the show to someone else. So uh, no pressure, lads. Anyway, quiz time. I've got three questions about the three of us and three questions about different, uh, uh, um, what's the word, specials, okay. like multi-doctor stuff. Okay. So first question is about Day of the Doctor. We yeah. all love it. We all reasonably like it anyway. First question, how old did the 11th Doctor say he was in Day of the Doctor? He did give a reasonably specific number. Oh, uh, can Closest I? Closest wins. Oh. Go is on, it, you go for is it. I'll uh, have it. Is it 12,000? That's your question? Uh, I, guess, I yeah. think it's, it's um, 1,203, I believe. What was your answer again? Hey! No, what was your answer? Oh, oh 12,000. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Is it, it is 1,200 and something. Oh. Very non-specific. Uh, Who do we give the point to there? I should have been more specific. Oh, everyone's pointing to you. All right, oh, one okay. point to Jack Alexander. Yes! Yo, it, system's against me, man. And uh, this next question's about our lovely nerd, Den. Hello, Mr. Sir. Oh. So if you don't get the point here, I'm going to be very disappointed. Okay. Oh, boy. Now, you've made many, many lovely videos over on your YouTube channel, Nerd Den. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, anyway. <laughs> I want to know what the most viewed original Doctor Who video that you've made is on your channel. So not anything that you've re-uploaded, because you have stolen, I mean, you have uploaded <laughs> many different clips from Doctor Who's history. Uh -huh. But what is one that you have certainly made? Ooh. What do you think? You're a big Nerd Den fan, aren't you? Aren't I you? think aren't you? it's going to be... I think it's going to be the Katie Manning interview he did for his podcast. Uh, okay, Katie Manning. Just oh, yeah, he's interviewed Katie Manning herself, ladies and gentlemen. That is very impressive. Yeah, now, Den, do you know the answer? Is it, is it, is it the power of the Doctor ending explained? It is power of the Doctor ending explained. Uh. Did you get it right? Do we know? Uh, I think so. Let's Probably. go with yeah. yeah. Well, that is... Well, just one point to you still, and still... Well, one point to you, because you did get it right. So that's oh, yeah. one all. Nice. Very evenly split. Back to a question about the show itself. The Five Doctors. Any fans okay. of the Five Doctors out there? Woo! Yeah. As you should, as you should. Now, I was going to ask which Doctors were in it, but then I realized that's the easiest question known to man. Yeah. So I want to know, you know Rassilon? Who yeah. played him? Uh, who, who played no. Rassilon in that one? Who? Uh, who? Oh, gosh. Some guy I mean, I can give you a multiple choice. Okay, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't do, want yeah. to, but I can. Is it Timothy Dalton, world famous Timothy Dalton? Uh, no. Is it Joshua Naismith? Is it David Sent Tennant? Or is it 
<laughs> I can't read my own writing, and it's not writing its text. Or is it Richard Matthews? I'm going to go with the last one. I was going to go Richard Matthews as well, yeah. Richard Matthews is correct, two points. Oh, Woo! yeah, yeah, yeah. Still even? Still even. For now. For now. Yeah, for now. The next question's about our fabulous Jack Alexander. Ooh. Except it's not. He mentioned oh. his beautiful co-host in the audience. I want to know his first and last name. Just, just, just what's his name? Yeah, this is rigged against just me. Just what's his name? He said the first name. You should at least get that. Oh yeah, should Robin. To the Robin. I say it every time. Robin. Oh, something. Oh. Yeah, they are. I'm not even gonna bother attempting. Wait, where are you, Robin? I believe he's had to get a bus to go home now. To be fair. <laughs> fair oh. enough. Well, Jack Alexander, what's his name? He is published author Robin Fole. Robin Fole. Yo. Fake okay. friend. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what. Uh -huh. uh, three points Ruined. to you. Two yes. points to him. Oh, it's getting uh, tense, isn't it? I should really stop putting my phone down. <laughs> All right, next question is about the three doctors. Okay. Closest answer wins. What were the viewing figures for the three doctors? Oh, God. We all know how important viewing figures are. Yep. So, closest wins. Any guesses? Any guesses? Any guesses from the audience? Hands up. Who wants to take a wild stab? Two fingers up it. What do you think? Two. two. You think two views? Well, at least wow, that. Okay. You'd hope so. Any other guesses? Oh, we've got some. Oh, uh, you're too far. Haha. <laughs> Inspector Gadget, what do you think? I can, I can literally cheat and check on my phone right you, my now, friend. but I'm not going to. Because I feel like one million or I, feel, I, feel, I feel it defeats the purpose of this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm going to go. Hey, hey. 10 mil. 10 mil over ten here, and. Uh, I'm going to say seven. We got a 10 mil, we got a 10 mil, we got a 7 uh, mil, we got a 7 mil. 10 mil. It is 9.6 oh, million. Oh, yes. Yo. Uh, That's another point there. Uh -huh. It's all right. Technically, you could still make it back. Okay, let me ask oh, okay. something. Because cool. we're on to the final question about me. Is oh, about okay. me. Like I said to you my, earlier, I have done five panels so far. And I'm kind of recycling this question. I want you to name. As many people that I've had on my panels alongside me as possible, a point for each name. Oh, right. Oh, okay. I can do this very easily. So very, just to remind easily. myself, is it four to you, two to you? Yeah. All to play for? Okay. They were, uh, well, mm, how are we going to know this? Have you both got your phone on you? Yes. Yeah, it is. I'm going to give you... No. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, wait, I need it. You've got to oh. write it down. Oh, right. Otherwise, okay. it's cheating, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just realized. So I'm right, going to give okay. you two minutes on the clock. Actually, no, one minute. One minute on the clock to name all of them. Again, a point for each. Look at them go. This is the content you've come, you've stayed here the very last day of the con to watch two white, white boys on stage texting. They could be looking at anything. What is that? Ugh. Someone should delete their search history. Moffat humor. <laughs> oh, yo. That's disgusting. Oh, no, it's a picture of you. Oh, yo, man. Oh, I'll get roasted. I don't care. I'm not back next year. I can do what I like. All right, let's see how much longer is on the timer. 20 seconds, 20 seconds on the clock, 20 seconds. Has anyone been to my, any of the previous Doctor Who panels that I've been lucky enough to be done? Well, you know my wife. There's one at the back, one over there, one over there. Much appreciated. Oh, two at the back. Oh, of course you guys have. You stay down. There we go. Well, thank you very much to all of you for popping your hands up. I, uh, I sent you to the WhatsApp. So time's up. Uh, well, well, first of all, before you list them, because I hope you've gotten some wrong, how many names have you put, Mr. Nerd Den? Hang on, let me count. Four, five, six, seven. Seven? Eight, something like that. And yours? Ten. Four. Well, I can tell you that there are 13 <laughs> potentials. Uh, so no pressure. <laughs> Mr. Nerd Den, why don't you list your friends? All right. So uh, starting off with uh, people that are in the audience. Uh, so we've got Luke Newman. Ding. Meg Shirley. Ding. Dominic G. Martin. Ding. Uh, then we've got Chris Walker-Thompson. Ding. Uh, Rory. Ding. Abby Louise. Ding. Mr. Tardis. Ding. Can't remember his last name, but Phil, the review guy. He's, how dare you? Oh, no, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not counting that because that's rude. Oh. That's seven points, my friend. Oh, Mr. No, Alexander. Man. Right. Okay. I have got Raslon Productions. Ding. Dom G. Martin. Ding. Philip Hawkins. Ding. Josh Carr. Ding. Ding. Abby Louise. Ding. Jude Laverius. D ding. Weirdly said, but ding. I know I said the name wrong with either. Meg and 
Luke Newman, obviously, as well. Ding. Chris Walker Thompson. Ding. Mr. Tardis. Ding. And I didn't count myself, Jack. And, and yeah, that. I was going to say, you, you oh, both yeah, count. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the first time I count for something. Impressive. Done. Well, I don't think we have to total up the scores to know yeah. who was yeah. one. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Alexander, if you'd like to stand. Oh. My friends, I give to you the new host of Doctor Who, The Community Yo, Show. Well done, man. And on my first act, I cancel the community show. Good night, everyone. <laughs> well, if I'm Yo. not mistaken, Mr. Alexander, you also have an announcement of sorts to make. I do, yes. If any of you are fans of Doctor Who audios and fan doctors, well, I am very happy to announce that I will be playing the Red Twilight Doctor for Time Sirens Production. So look out for that Ooh. in the coming year. Yeah, Exciting man. Stuff. Hope. And wouldn't you know it, we do have a bit of time left for a possible Q and A. Some potential Doctor Who questions that might come your way. Oh, so oh. I reckon the best way to do it is if you'd all like to come and make a cheeky line over here, if you'd like to make a question. If not, I will just run into the audience like an absolute madman. I will find you and I will hunt you down. Ooh. Thank you, my friend. Just okay. behind Mr. Swaggy Hat. That's what I'm gonna call you now. That's your name. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm gonna come over and you can use... Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit. All right, well, uh, I'll hand that to you. My first question, well, my only question, is if you had a choice to make one episode a two-parter, what would it be? Oh, oh easy. Uh, resolution. The first Dalek episode, is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll make that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that was multiple parts, wasn't it? The first uh, J.D. Whittaker. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Okay. Um, I would probably go Orphan 55 because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I'm going to go with The War Games, not long enough. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, my question is, um, what would you, uh, if you had the choice, what would you think would be the perfect Cyberman episode? Ooh, body horror. Lots of body horror, I think. Make it... Make the Cybermen more zombie-like, maybe. Have the real dread of it, in that sense. Really lean into it. Even make it black and white. I think yeah. that'd be really cool. I was, about, I was gonna say, black and white would be the way to go, because that, you can get away with a lot more in black and white. Also, just put Bill Potts in it again. That seemed to work the last time. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's the exact same that I'd have, but also maybe do like Victorian era Cybermen. Imagine a steampunk Cyberman. That Ooh, would be incredible. That would be amazing, yeah. But, Oh, yeah, it, oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. It would be bloody gorgeous, yeah. Nice, thank you. Next. So, last year we saw filming for the upcoming specials leaked, um, and in interviews, David Tennant has, when asked about indoor filming, he has said, oh, you have no idea what's coming. What do you think he's referring to? I mean, multi-doctor is the thing which comes to your head straight away, doesn't it, yeah. you know? And we've been saying this every, all along. Ever since they, you know, we saw pictures of Beat the Meep on set. We were saying they're doing Beat the Meep whilst around the corner, they're doing this amazing multi-doctor stuff, but they're putting Beat the Meep out there to, to, to distract us. So, yeah, that's what I think. Multi-doctor, yeah. I think we're going to get a few other returning faces, like a certain Susan Foreman, I think, will definitely be one. Oh, please. And I feel like that's going to be the last time we'll see that character. Even though we haven't seen her in a long time, it'll be an emotional send-off. Oh, I just think it's more Beat the Meep. You can't yeah, have enough. I, mean, I, can't I want him that. in every single special. Him, her, they, I don't care. More beep, please. Let's just cancel the show and call it Beat the Meat for now. On. Yeah, just beep who? Yeah, beep the who, love it. Oh, Hi. Pat Butcher, love it. Yeah. Um, if you had to choose a favorite doctor, who would it be and why? I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, we uh, certainly love uh, a little bit of David Tennant, don't we? Jodie Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You two look Jody, like you're yeah, going yeah. to karaoke there, you know. My endless love. I mean, uh, don't <laughs> yeah, get no, on it's, karaoke. Uh, for, I think <laughs> David, for a lot of us, was that one we grew up with, so sort of automatically is our favourite. I do always say that McCoy is my sort of favourite classic Doctor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Capaldi, if you ask me any other day of the week, could be my favourite as well, so yeah. But David is, David's our boy, I think, yeah. Oh, yes. Love Dave, love Dave. If you could be in the creation process, the writing room, the building of the set, the filming process for any episode, what episode would you choose? Ooh. 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 I, I wouldn't. I know myself way too well to know that I, should be, I shouldn't be allowed in like 10 feet of BBC at all. <laughs> I have the worst ideas. But also, 
The Autons. I don't know. I can't think of one. No, then. Yo, so for me, I would like to uh, push Doctor Who in a bit more of a, not adult, but a little bit more where there's some stakes. So maybe have an episode, starts off like your normal episode, but the companion dies and dies permanently. Yeah, Bill Fox. Well, yeah, but she kind of got a happy ending, though. I mean, like, proper Adric dead. Boom. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, so kind of raises the stakes a little bit, and uh, I like to see the Doctor being yeah, put like through that. hell. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I suppose I like that. You know, I try and I try and do an experimental episode every year, probably like a black and white one, a silent episode, one filmed in the style of the classic Doctor Who. I think that's where I go for it. Yeah, bro. Sorry to be very rude, but this is going to be the final question, my good friend. Mm. I do apologise to all of you except for the fourteen. You sit down. <laughs> but this is the very last question. Ten's fine, but this is the last question. I do apologise. Uh, while Ross T. Davis seems to be in the mood for adapting expanded media, uh, which Big Finish story would you like to see adapted to the big screen, and why? Chimes of Midnight. Immediately. <laughs> Chimes of Midnight. The best. Yeah. Oh, Chimes of Midnight, very good. Scherzo, for me, would be one, which I think people are thinking could be, maybe Bob Longer there might be a little bit of a adaptation to it, but I think Scherzo would be, I mean, I don't know how you do it on TV, but I'm sure Russell would figure it out, you know. I mean, I'm a bit of a big Finnish noob, really, really but uh, the recent releases I've listened to, something like Dalek Universe, but with, an, but with another Doctor would be incredible. Like, bring them back for, like, a limited series or something on Disney+. Plus. I, I just thought it would be even better one. Anyone here a fan of the Doctor Chronicles? <laughs> yes. Ooh. Absolutely. I say uh, not an adaptation, but I would bring in Valerie Lockwood from that series into the main show. So, yeah, oh, yeah that's what I do, cool. yeah. Fair one. Well, thank you so much for your questions, and thank you all thank you. for sticking it out to the very end of the con with us. Much appreciated, and get home safe, my friends. Peace Peace up, thank people. you, everyone. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I need my phone. <laughs> yeah.